All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back to another networking video. We are working through our series on BGP. And today's video, this is sort of a midweek video. And the reason I'm doing an extra one is because I want to go through another topology that students of mine are doing in the lab. So the first one, we just sort of put together a couple of ASs. Now we're going to have a transit AS in there. And so we'll see what happens. I also want to do this one because Packet Tracer has limits and so in BGP we experience one of those limits so I'm going to show you what that is and what the problem is and then I'll show you an actual capture that I did in the lab okay here we go so BGP v4 all right since we're going to be talking about messaging in this one mostly and a couple of messages in particular the open and an update I thought I'd start right here, recognizing that we have this basic header. And we'll see that all of our BGP messages have this basic header, and it gets down to this type. Now, the fun thing about the marker field here that starts us all off is it's going to be set to all ones. And so in a packet tracer or in, well, really in Wireshark, you'll see all Fs there in hexadecimal until we get down to the type, and that'll tell us, you know, what flavor of message we are doing. So let's take a quick look at the open. So here's the basic header for the open. We're going to see, you know, that we'll see that general header, and then we'll see that there's an autonomous system number that goes along with this, the ID that goes along with that, and we talked about that last time, and then some optional parameters, and we'll see that Cisco has a couple of optional parameters in this particular build that I did uh, in the lab. And so I think we talked about this uh, last time. I won't belabor this, but we will take a look at an actual packet right now. So this is one that's that's sort of static, and I'll leave it in here. But really what we're talking about is here's the general header, right? And the, there's the marker. So the RFC says this is all ones, but of course that's binary. And so it's all Fs in hexadecimal, which is what you'll see in uh, Wireshark. We've got our open message, which is just a type one and the overall length of the message. This right here is the general header. There's an AS number that I assigned to this particular router, the ID, and remember that by default, uh, BGP speakers wanna use the loopback if it's configured. And so you don't actually have to tell a router what its ID is if you use a loopback. And we don't like uh, routing protocols to pick things by themselves. Now here are some optional parameters and I'll, I'll show you an actual capture and we'll, we'll open these all up but really again these are optional and they're the things like additional protocol support and stuff like that so let's take a look at a real one so here is a wireshark capture and i'm going to point out a couple of things first we'll look at the packet trace itself and we can see that i've got two bgp speakers here so this is on the three net and so we've got 3.254 and 3.253 talking directly to each other. And what they're doing is opening a TCP connection between themselves. So maybe we'll move this over a little bit. There we are. So here is our SYN, SYNAC Act. So the conversation here is exactly like any client server connection that we're used to seeing. Uh, and we're going to use port 179. And so that's important to us on the BGP side. Uh, and then we'll, we'll see, we've got a couple of open messages. Now here, the uh, the two sides were trying to, to find each other. And then as I got the configuration built, they started sending updates uh, to each other. So what does an open message look like? Here's our standard header, right? Source and destination IP address, source and destination MAC address. There's our TCP ports that we're using for this one, our general header. And then the AS for this one is 30,000. And then look at that. Here's our optional parameters. Now this length is going to tell us the overall length of the, the optional parameters, right? You can see all those down here. And as we open these up, each one of these is a different one from the RFC. And of course, again, these are optional. Multi-protocol extensions. Now, just for fun, we've got an AFI is address family identifier, and this one happens to be IPv4. And yes, there is IPv6 support for or in, in BGP. So route refresh capability here, these are all described in the RFC. So there we have it. So really an open could stop right here and with an optional parameters length of 
zero. Okay, so there we go. There's an open message. Well, let's go back and talk a little bit about the updates that we're going to see, and then we'll go to Packet Tracer. Now, just as a little preamble to the updates, right? Forwarding in BGP is all about getting to a particular destination, right? We're not trying to get there and back. We're not specifying any other details except, you know, how, how do we get to the destination? And we're going through a series of ASs. Now, BGP has a number of routing information bases. This is uh, the ribs here. And so we've got temporary ones, we've got incoming data, outcoming data, converged data, and that is all stored in the routing information basis. Now, a couple of details about how BGP updates. Now, as soon as routers identify each other, as soon as they establish that TCP connection and they do the opens, they're willing to send each other updates if they've been identified as BGP peers, right? A BGP does not discover peers, BGP requires that you say, that's my peer over there, and vice versa. And you specify not only the IP address, but the AS number. Whenever there are changes, you don't have to send the entire routing table. You're just going to send updates. And after you do all of your updates, you're going to drop into keep alive. And so we don't need to refresh the routing table unless something changes. And so what ends up happening is once the routers are satisfied that they know everything, they just drop into keep alive. And we'll see that in the capture. Okay, now every route that's established has a sort of attributes that go along with it. So what we're going to see in an update is a bunch of attributes associated with that particular update. And we'll see what that means here in a second. But the other thing that we're going to see is network layer reachability information. Now, updates have the ability to do compounding, so you can have multiple updates in the same packet. Now, what is network uh, layer reachability info? Well, all the networks are going to be identified as being, well, for lack of a better word, a network. But we are going to identify those as being associated with a particular prefix. And so We've got not only this destination paradigm, but we also have the encoding of the, the prefixes. So that's really what we're worried about. Now, it gets a little tricky in BGP because we're used to dealing with prefixes. We're used to doing with dealing with CIDR, and we're used to dealing with the ability to subnet and supernet. But what we're going to add with BGP is a path. And so all of this sort of network layer reachability is also dependent upon having the same path. So if you're going to collapse things together, they have to be along the same path. And we'll see a couple of a couple of examples of that. So you can aggregate things together, but there's some, you know, some caveats and some stipulations here. So the message update is much what you might expect it to. Here's this network that I know. Here's my AS number. Here's the network layer reachability. Here's how I learned it. Here's the details about this particular network. And of course, we can add or remove updates or add or remove networks with the update message. Uh, and so we, we have this. And so this message is going to be used for all of our configuration changes. And remember that what we're trying to do is establish a graph of AS connectivity. That's what we have to remember. So when we grab a router, the router is assigned to a particular AS number. And everything is about trying to get to networks through a bunch of ASs and then reaching networks that are sitting inside or behind an autonomous system number. So here's an, an example of an update message and again we'll we'll take a look at Wireshark here in a second but here are this is an update message right and the I'm getting an update message about this particular network prefix so down here is this network layer reachability information so what we're learning is that I can get to this network via a particular AS but here are details about the path how did I learn this route where is the next stop that kind of stuff okay so what we'll find out here is that some path attributes are mandatory to support and some are optional. Now this, this packet over here is just expanding one particular one. So here's the AS path that we're going through uh, and then the sequence that we're going through here. So again, we're talking about a path vector protocol. Interestingly enough, the word vector doesn't appear in the RFC at all. 
now I'm going to stop talking on this slide we have a bunch of attributes here as you can see from the chart at the top here this is right from the RFC and we can see that a bunch of these are mandatory attributes in other words they must be supported by your BGP speakers and then some are discretionary and there's a difference between what eBGP and iBGP are required to uh, to support so a couple of the big ones origin right who did this come from and what flavor of of message is it the AS path right this is mandatory this is this is the whole point what AS did this come from and how many AS's are we passing through and then next top right should be the best path router IP address and this would be this would assume that a router had converged on a particular pathway right because we can't have more than one way to the destination but it sort of makes sense that if we're trying to say here's how I get to networks I am trying to say well what's what kind of network am I getting to what uh, was the source of the information and what's the pathway along which uh, this traffic would have to travel okay so let's take a quick look at a packet tracer topology now you can see that I've got a bunch of routers here and these are my AS numbers in this particular topology 10,000 20,000 and 30,000 remember that early BGP numbers or AS numbers were 16 bits and later they were 32 bits and if I take a look at my CLI here we'll take a look at a couple of things first is that I do have a loopback and so my BGP speaker is going to use that as its BGP ID and all that I've got it's really sort of a straightforward uh, configuration a couple of IP addresses on my interfaces here is where you specify that the router is using this particular AS number now if you had multiple routers within the ASN uh, you could do that we'll do another one of those builds later and here is where I am specifying who my neighbor is note that it is not in my AS in this particular case so it's a remote AS but it is somebody that I can directly communicate with and here is the network that I'm going to advertise and that is pretty much it that's the entirety of the config but if I take a look at my routing table I can see a couple things that I've learned some BGP routes here now if we take a look at our topology we have three routers and one two three four networks and so what I want in my routing tables is those four networks but in this case I also have loopback so I'll have that as well so here's two BGP learned routes here are two directly connected routes and then here is the loopback itself so that's my five and I can see that I've got my admin distance and metric here now the admin distance for eBGP is going to be 20 and then here is the router that told me about this now this routing table entry it tells me that I can get there but it doesn't tell me a whole lot about you know BGP itself so I can take a look at um, my BGP configuration a little bit you know from a different perspective and I can see that my BGP speakers right next top is 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 me because not only am I directly connected there but I have no other BGP speaker out there here is the other directly connected route and the BG there's a BGP speaker on that line now these two are kind of interesting the three net how did I get there well from the perspective of this router it's on the other side of router one so there's the three net right there and so this is my next hop now the four net is even more interesting because I have the same next stop but take a look at the path these are the AS's that I will travel through to get to that destination uh, network and so this is the whole point so a collection of AS's represent the path to that destination now I've got some other details here that tell me a little bit about how I learned this uh, route what kind of route it is now here is a Cisco specific uh, characteristic so this weight is used here and now again that's a Cisco build it's not not in the RFC and then you got some other metrics and local preferences that you can put in there all right so clearly this topology is working and I can step through my simulation here if I can open it up and see that it's working all right and here's one of the bummers about packet tracer and BGP 
So if I take a look here, I can see that I'm doing TCP. Packet Tracer tells me that these are BGP messages, but it doesn't tell me any details about them. In fact, if I got a uh, an update message, maybe what we'll do is, so if I delete this link, and so it's running in real time, and now I open up my simulation, right, and we'll reconnect the routers using crossovers, of course, because I don't want to make them auto-negotiate. And then we're, you know, we're ARPing back and forth. There's some BGP messages. Well, what are these? And in fact, I have to wait some time, because I'm stepping through here, wait some time to get some detail from my router. And when I finally get it, I'll expand this a little bit for you, there's no detail in here. So none of my BGP fields are exposed. Okay, so what I did was I went in and I to the lab and I built this exact same topology. And we're looking at a conversation that's right here on the three net. Let's take a look at this middle router because it straddles, right? It is the transit AS. And so we take a look at the config for this one we can see that, right, IP addresses, but here's my, my AS number, but take a look at my neighbors. So I'm pointing to a neighbor in each direction, but with different AS numbers. And so I'm at, while I'm advertising the routes to which I am connected, I've got two different BGP neighbors with two different AS numbers. So that would be how you would do the middle BGP AS number and the router you know, the single router in this case running that AS. Okay, so we did our TCP handshake. We opened connections between the two sides. We drop into our Keep Alive's and there's just not a whole lot of detail in a Keep Alive. Now here's an update. Now here we see our network layer reachability. So this is 3.254 describing how to get to the Fournet. And here we take a look at all of the attributes that are associated with this particular destination. And so we've got that that it's a, an IGP. So IGP in this case means that I did not learn this particular route from an external gateway protocol. More interesting, I suppose, is the fact that this is part of AS 30,000 and that my next stop is 3.254. So this is the advertising router that this is coming from. And then my network reachability is not all that strange. It's just sort of straightforward in this particular case, right? It's just a Fournet with, of course, the prefix. Now here's an example of a compound packet. In this particular case, we have a number of different kinds of messages inside our BGP packet. So this is compounding. And then we can see that we've got a couple of updates here. Now here's the path attributes, right? Again, we've got an origin, we've got our path and our next hop, pretty straightforward. These are mandatory. These are the ones that we wanna make sure that we include. And then we've got another update here that includes the other details from my routing table. So we can see that we've got the two and the three net here being advertised. And so we're gonna have path attributes for these networks now. Now the nice thing for these particular networks is that they're reachable via the same AS number. Well, I think that'll do it for this particular video. I will leave you with a reading page. So these are sections from the RFC that some details for this video and the previous one came from. And of course, I'll go into some greater detail uh, next time. But what I wanted to make sure of is that I showed you um, all the details that that might help you get through, you know, sort of the next, next configuration. Okay, that'll do it. Hey, like and subscribe if I helped. And may those packets always reach those destinations, whether you're in a transit AS or a stub AS.